So in the beginning was the word of God and the word was with God and the word was God. And this is John chapter one, verses one through 14. If you have your phones, you can pull it up. If you have your Bibles, you can open them up. In verse two, it says, he was with God in the beginning and through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing that was made has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John, and he came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He only came as a witness to the light. So I want to stop here for a second, and I want to look at this a little closer because in 1 John, there's a whole bunch going on, especially here in these first five verses. So let's start here in verse 1. In John chapter 1, starting in verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So I know there are some of you sitting here today that you're not completely bought into this Jesus thing. Maybe your parents taught you about it when you were younger and you're like, I don't know about that. Maybe they didn't teach it to you when you were younger and you're still like, I don't know if that, I, I completely agree with all of that. But here's a statement that is made here that is completely polarizing. How did we get here is about what John's about to talk about here in chapter one. How did we get here? Now, I know that for some of you, you not believing or, or whatever you might believe, you're going to like you're going to shut off your brains right here. And this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Stay with me. Stay with me. Don't get stuck right here. Follow along with me. Humor me and just say, okay, what if this was actually true? What if I actually believed in this? What if I was going to give this a shot? Now, the last time I said this, I said it was like two or three weeks ago. And I said, here's going to be a point to where some of you are going to want to put down roots and you're going to say, oh, I want to argue with him and I want to fight with him. And I want, I said, just stay with me. And somebody found me in the lobby and they missed everything that I said after that statement because they got stuck right there. Don't be that person today. Stay with me today. So it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Notice something going on here. And go back to verse 1. Notice something going on here is the Word is capitalized every time. Now, this isn't one of my old papers that I used to turn in in college. Uh, I don't know that I even had to write a paper in high school. But it's not because grammatically it's wrong. There's something going on here. So if you start or when you start reading your Bible... Start looking for things like this that stand out, like that shouldn't be capitalized. Why in the world would that be capitalized? Because when he's talking about in the beginning was the word, the word there, the Greek word is logos. And there's a few options here. One of the options is this is the first name we encounter of God. This is the first name that we encounter for Jesus is another, another translation of logos is, is knowledge. It is wisdom. There's all of this going on here, so it's all sort of wrapped up, and they put skin around it, and they say, okay, that's Jesus later on in the New Testament. But here at the very beginning, in the beginning was the Word. In the beginning, so if we replace the word, word, with Jesus, maybe it helps us understand this a little bit more. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Now, there are Christians and different religions that are like, oh, we've got to fight about that. Let, let's not fight about that today. We, we can fight about that a different day. Let's just keep going on here and see what the rest of Scripture has to say. In verse 2, he says, he was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. So who created everything in the very beginning? We, we, Christians would say it is God. This gives us the creation versus evolution argument, right? And, and don't get stuck here on the creation versus evolution argument. And then like within Christianity, people like to argue old earth versus new earth. Let's not get stuck on that either. Let, let's stay right here in scripture and let's let it speak to us a little bit here. He was with God in the beginning. So who created everything? Jesus was actually the part of the Godhead, you got Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Jesus was actually the creator of everything here on earth at the beginning. It wasn't like God the Father, it wasn't the Holy Spirit. This scripture tells us that it was Jesus who spoke everything into being, and if he spoke everything into being, 
then he was the creator of what's going on here. So he was with God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. You know when you try, uh, when you try remembering something and you put it to a song, or you try emphasizing certain words? That's what John is doing here. It almost sounds like backward, like he's trying to reinforce the same thing by saying it backwards a little bit, almost like Yoda would pull this thing out, right? He was with God in the beginning and through him all things were made. That was made without him, nothing was made that has been made. So it's like, okay, you're, you're like, you're touching on this twice, so there's something going on here. So recognize that. So we go on here in, in verse four, it says, in him was life and life was the light of all mankind. Now, this later on, when we talk about Jesus says, you are the light of the world, uh, uh, we do, uh, you are the light, and uh, light goes into darkness. He's, what is he saying? He's saying, take me into the darkness. And this started actually in Genesis where they talk about this, Jesus being the light of the world. But he says, in him was life, and life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. If you could ask God one question, what would that question be? Now, I want you to think about this for a second. If you could ask God one question, what would that question be? Because the question shouldn't be, is grandma in heaven? The question shouldn't be, now I know some of you, I spent time with some of you, the question should not be, what are the winning lottery numbers? That, that's not the question you should ask God, right? Like, no, that's fun and all, but don't ask uh, do I need to be baptized, you know, to, to be a follower of you? Now, if you haven't been baptized uh, the last Sunday of the year, we are doing baptisms in here. We would like to have you come. If you're interested, pull out your green card right now and write your name on the back of it uh, or tell me you're interested in baptism and then go ahead and plop it in the bucket when we ask for it later. But don't ask God, is there, is there, do I need to be baptized? Scripture has always talked to us about that. You, the question you need to ask God is, did you create everything? Did God create everything? Because here I believe is the, is the most foundational, um, um, that if we start with this, we can work our way up to everything else. Bob Russell is a preacher who has been around forever. And Bob Russell said in his teaching series on Genesis that if you can believe the first verse of the Bible, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, you won't have a problem believing the rest of the Bible. Not about bringing people back to life, not about healing the lame or the blind or the making the sun stand still or, or bringing up dry bones from the desert to fight as an army. There's all that stuff in scripture. If you believe that God created everything that has been created, some things haven't been created being God, which pff, whatever, um, and that's where people get stuck. Don't get stuck there. Just, just humor me. Try something that you haven't tried before. But if you can believe in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, it's really easy to believe everything else that is stated in scripture. So that's the question I think we ask God is, did you create everything? Now I got a whole bunch, of, I got like a long list of other things that I wanna ask God. Like, you know, so, so, uh, so in uh, Job, Job loses his wife and he loses his kids and his animals and all this and that type of stuff. And it says that God at the end, you know, gave him back tenfold. Does that mean Job had like 10 wives or like she was super hot? Or like, I don't know, like those are the things that run through my mind. Like I don't have any idea, but those are the questions when I get one-on-one -on -one with God, I'm like, all right, let's lay it out. I gotta figure out what's going on here. There are some more questions too, but that's one of the fun ones. So. So, so here's the thing, what would happen if, for those of you who struggle with this qu question or think Christians are stupid because they just buy into this creation and there's no science behind creation, what if you just decided, okay, for, for this month, I'm going to live as if I believe this. I don't believe it. I think it's all just made up stories. I think it, like it doesn't really count for anything. But what if you lived for the next 30 days as if God was real? What if you lived the next 30 days as if 
God spoke everything into being, and then whatever scripture says you're going to try doing, how would it affect your life? I mean, really, how would it affect your life? What would you do differently than what you are doing right now? This, this is the thing. Some of you aren't followers of Jesus yet, and, and it would change so much of what you believe. Some of you are followers of Jesus, and you haven't put into uh, your daily life what God says to do and what God says not to do. So we are these practical atheists. We say we believe, but we do not live our life as if we believe. So what if over the next 30 days we lived our life as if we believe that, that God was real, that Jesus spoke everything into being, and then the rest of the scripture is actually also true? Would your life change for the better or the worse? Would it even change? Maybe you're already doing this. Maybe you're not. But would your life change for the better or the worse if you tried this? Try it for the next 30 days. See what happens. So, so let's go back to John chapter 1, 1 through 5. I want to look this a little bit closer. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And we, we pointed out here that the Greek word is logos. And logos is, is a word that is spoken. That's what Jesus did at the beginning to create the, worth, uh, create the world. It is the first name we run into for Jesus or part of the Godhead. So it's there too. And then you have to know how to create all of this. So there is knowledge and wisdom. So this word logos is who he is. It is his name. It is what he is doing. And it is also what he is made up of, this wisdom, this knowledge that all starts everything. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So this is a pretty big statement. So if we knew, if we were going to live as if God created everything, and he spoke it all into being, and, and if he created everything just out of speaking it into being, then all of the rest of the stuff should be pretty easy to believe, then wouldn't we want to be on the correct team don't you want to join the correct team? If you would accept that, that you are a part of something bigger. Now, from my mind, because I follow Scripture, because I believe in Scripture, because, of, because historically it seems accurate, because archaeologically, because philosophically, because of all of these different parts, I see that it is accurate. I know we are all a part of something bigger, whether we like to admit it or not. So I believe also all of us, there's something inside of us that God put there that made us want to be a part of something bigger. So if you're going to join something, if you're going to try doing something bigger, if you're going to try being a part of something bigger, wouldn't you want to be a part of the winning team as you did this? What kind of leader do you look for? Now, if you believe, or now if you hear that, uh, that, the word being spoken, created and everything. So God created everything and Jesus created everything, but he was also humble enough at Christmas, at the birth of what we know as Jesus, not Logos, not as Elohim, not as all these other names we have gone through. He humbled himself and came and lived inside of skin. And this is what happens at Christmas. That Logos, the person, the being that is so powerful that he has all knowledge and all wisdom and can speak things into creation, says the only way to put everything back right, to fix everything, to get everybody where they need to be is for me to go down there personally. And he humbled himself and came down here and lived on the earth. We all like to talk about Easter being he humbled himself and he went to the cross I'm wondering if this wasn't even more painful than him going to the cross. You are a part of something. Father, God, and Holy Spirit, or Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all a part of something. And Jesus removed himself from something that has always been and has, has blocked some of his powers. That some He is God, 100% God. He is 100% man, which makes zero sense at all. It's like every coach that says, you know, I need 110% from you. It's an impossibility. I cannot give you more than I have. But somehow or another, Jesus is 100% God and 100% man 
Only God can figure that out. And I need to believe in something bigger. I need to live my life for something bigger. And I believe you need to live your lives for something bigger as well. And whether you know it or not, you are a part of something bigger. You are playing a role in everything that God has laid out. And it started at the beginning was the word, and then we move into this child being born, this, this God being born. I think Max Lucado said it best, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try reading this here. It says, God became man. While the creatures of the earth walked unaware, divinity arrived. Heaven opened herself and placed her most precious one in a human womb. The omnipotent in one instant made himself breakable. He who has been split, who, he who has been spirit became pierceable. He who was larger than the universe became an embryo. And the one who sustains the world with the word chose to become dependent upon the nourishment of a young girl. God as a fetus. God was given eyebrows, elbows, two kidneys, and a spleen. He stretched against the walls, and he floated in the amniotic fluids of his mother. God had come near. This is Christmas. The God of the universe comes, and he dwells, and he lives inside of skin so that you and I could see a correct example so that you and I could know that we are a part of something bigger, so that you and I would know what role we are supposed to play in this story that is unfolding from the beginning of Scripture until the end of Scripture. John chapter 1, verse 2, it says, He was with God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made and that has been made. In him was life. Here it is in verse 4. In him was life and the light of mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. Christmas, Christmas is one of those, it's a time to remind us that we're all a part of something bigger. Christmas reminds you of the love that God has for you, no matter whether you're a scoundrel or a princess no matter what background you come from or the mistakes that you have made in your past, none of that matters to him. What matters to him is you want to be a part of what he is doing. So what role will you play? For those of you who don't believe, over the next three weeks, over the next 30 days, try living your life as if it was real and see how it affects your life. Because God wants you. God came to this earth for you. Your mistakes and and the best of you and the worst of you, all. God came here and put on skin and lived as a child and went through everything that children and, gosh, think of like a middle school Jesus and how middle school boys are. And he went through all of that. And and then he got into high school and and then he's in his 30s and he finally starts his ministry at 30 years old at 30 years old, and then we see three and a half years of his life recorded in scripture. And God came here so that you would know you are part of something bigger, that you are loved, and God chose you. I'm gonna go ahead and pray, and we're gonna gonna move into this time of communion. Now, this time of communion, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna we're going to have some men, we're going to have them come, and they're going to pass these trays. And there, there are cups, uh, and, and there are crackers, and you can take those. And what I want you to have is some time alone with the creator of the universe. I want you to have some time alone with the one who spoke this into being, yet humbled himself to come as a child and experience everything that we experience, good and bad. And you just have some time with him, some one-on-one time to where you get to um, maybe look back and ask for forgiveness if you've done something wrong. So I'm guessing all of us are doing that. <laughs> maybe you need to look back and you need to thank God specifically for him for showing up in times of your life 
just at the right time. And maybe he showed up in a circumstance. Maybe he showed up in a person. Maybe he showed up in a different way that I don't even know anything about. But you thank him for that. And then you get to spend a little time with God. And when you are ready, as part of this worship that we are doing here today, worship being communion, worship being hearing the word of God, worship singing along with these songs, worship in, in giving tithes and offerings, all of it is worship. But I want you to take some time and I want you to go ahead and take communion, the bread and the cup, as um, as you go ahead and you feel uh, ready. I'm going to pray and we're going to move into that time. Father God, I thank you for the love that you bring. I thank you for the commitment that you have made to us. I thank you that, that wherever I look, in the movies and books and anything that seems to be successful, you are there waiting on me, just trying to remind me how much you love me and how much you care for me. I ask you, Lord, to just show your way in everything that is said and done. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.